Today we're presenting with Aegis Pinnacle. Um, and many of you know Aegis Pinnacle um, as an MAT provider throughout the entire state of California. I'm very excited about having them present and letting us ask them all of our burning questions about getting patients over um, to their um, facilities. So far since they've joined the network, we've had a very positive experience working with them. Um, they, they have a lot of availability, um, lots of facilities. Um, it, it'd, be, it'd be hard to, to not find one. Um, so especially for these folks that we're working with now in more rem remote areas, this is going to be such an amazing option for everyone. And I'm so glad that we have this now. Um, so we have a few folks coming on from ages, and I'm not sure if all of you are taking a piece of presenting. I'm going to um, do my advanced sharing options here. I always forget that piece. Okay. Um, so I want to just um, introduce the folks from Aegis. Um, so everyone knows who's oh, hard. Oh, sorry. Can you get, are you guys able to share your screen? Just check that. Um, yes, I'll check right now. So, and, and if I um, don't do a good job of saying anybody's name, please forgive me. So we have Sarah Kawajalajani. Is that right? Is that how I say it, Sarah? Yeah, Kawajalajani. Kawajalajani. <laughs> Beautiful name. And I never said it out loud, so I'm glad. Um, Robert Muskena, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, Victoria Beck and Dr. Brian Talur. So um, take it away, guys. And then we'll, um, you know, if you prefer to have people um, interrupt with questions as they come up, um, let us know, you know, what do you prefer? Wait till the end or, or pop in when they have questions? Yeah, we, we made it pretty short. We'll probably be speaking for about 10 minutes and then we'll leave the rest for questions. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right, we'll go ahead and get started. And thank you for that introduction, Amy. Good morning, everyone. And thank you for joining our meeting today. We are Aegis, a Pinnacle Treatment Center Network. I am Sarah, and I'm the Senior Director of Patients and Grants, or Patient Services, excuse me, and Grants. And with me today, I have Vicki and Rob, who are Assistant Regional Directors with us, and Dr. T, who is our Chief Medical Officer. We focus on treating opioid use disorder through medication and counseling. We are in nine states and we have 46 locations in California. Today, we hope to share with you information on our services and how you can refer a patient to us. But before we get into that, Rob will be kicking us off with some California statistics on the opioid overdose crisis that we are facing. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for this opportunity. I wanted to start off by saying, you know, we are definitely in a crisis in dealing with opioids in our communities and in our state. As you can see from the statistics on the slide, over 21,000 people are affected by opioid overdoses. 28% of those actually end in fatalities. That's about 5,961 individuals that have suffered fatalities due to overdose. 224 of those are children. What I really want to bring to everybody's attention is in the time that we are talking here today, we have about 30 minutes. In that 30 minutes, six people will have suffered from overdose, potentially a fatality. Those fatalities also include our children. As you can see from the statistics here, one in seven of our children of 11th grade or younger are affected by opioids. Over 21 million prescriptions for some sort of opioid is prescribed within California. It is imperative that we know what's in our medicine cabinets. It's imperative that we protect our children from what's in those medicine cabinets. In the time that we're talking today, and as, as I have explained that within the 30 minutes, six people will suffer from overdoses. I just wanna give you a statistic here. The national average right now is every five minutes, somebody suffers from an overdose, which that means by the end of today, within a 24 hour period, 
288 people will suffer from overdoses. Some of those will be fatalities and some of those may be our children. It's critical that we take this crisis seriously and provide people the help that they need immediately. And I think what's important here is to understand what addiction is and Dr. T will help with that. Hello everyone. Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Tuller. Met you a little earlier. Um, so addiction is a primary chronic disease of the brain reward system. Um, the memory, the motivation, and uh, all that related circuitry, a dysfunction in these circuits, it leads to the characteristic biological, psychological, social, and spiritual manifestations. Um, this is reflected in a patient who's addicted, pathologically pursuing the reward uh, or relief from a substance. Uh, so patients often when they try to abstain, um, they're unable to, and they'll have impairment in other areas of their life. And um, addiction is a chronic disease that could also uh, have multiple, can relapse multiple times, um, and it could end in uh, disability or premature death. So at Aegis Pinnacle, we uh, focus on opioid use disorder. So all the patients admitted to our program uh, they must be diagnosed with opioid use disorder. We use um, two medications, methadone and suboxone, also known as buprenorphine. Um, methadone is nice because you can use it. You're, you don't have to worry about precipitated withdrawals and the potency of the opioids that patients are using. Uh, they can make a, an induction with buprenorphine a little bit challenging uh, because buprenorphine, suboxone, a patient has to be off of the fentanyl for 24 hours uh, or more to start them on the uh, on the suboxone buprenorphine. So those are the two main, main medications. What we're trying to do is we're trying to relieve uh, the cravings, the withdrawals the best we can so the patients can retain the counseling and uh, be active participants. And uh, and that's it for the medical the medical piece. There's a lot more, but that's that's it for the slide. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. T. And so in talking about what is addiction, I think it's vital that we talk about what addiction is not. You know, far too much um, treatment goes out there stigmatized and that, you know, that in somehow that it's their fault, it's a failing, it's a weakness, when in all actuality it is not, it's a strength. For somebody to come into treatment, we need to encourage those that they are strong, that they need support. This can't be done alone. There needs to be an imperative and, and st strategic um, support system in place. So I think it's vital that, that we talk about what addiction is not. It is not nothing to be ashamed of. It is something to be cultivated. It is something to be embraced. It is something to be given that support for that individual to seek and to stay into treatment. And so with that being said, I'm gonna lead it off with Vicki to talk a little bit about our mission, our vision and what we do. Thank you, Rob. My name is Vicki. And now that you've heard about addiction and the epidemic that Aegis is fighting in California with the opiate crisis, I wanted to tell you about our mission and vision. Aegis's mission is to make recovery possible to our communities with treatment that works. Our vision is a better California where communities and the person served can be made whole again with treatment. And how do we do that? We First, we try to meet patients where they are at, not, not only physically by having, um, Amy talked a little bit about this, we have clinics all over California, we're opening MUs to get into the more rural areas for the people that need us. Um, our vision is also to meet people where they're at in their recovery. We do that by providing clinically and medically managed treatment using methadone and buprenorphine, but we also provide group and family counseling as well as individual counseling one to four times a month, um, more if needed. All of our counselors utilize evidence-based curriculum. We develop relapse prevention plans, discharge plans. We offer aftercare services. We have early recovery specialists that work with our new patients and our patients are monitored daily following admission. We offer, we offer patient advocacy and advisory groups 
They provide keys to recovery groups for peer-to-peer -peer services, and patients are always encouraged to apply to become PAG members. Um, and now that we've told you about the services we provide, Sarah is going to tell you about our admission process. Thank you, Vicki. So for the next few slides, I will be discussing our admission and referral process, as well as the grant assistance that we offer. As Dr. T mentioned, we do serve patients 18 and older who have an opioid use disorder. Um, and we welcome them at any of our 46 locations. However, if you do know somebody under the age of 18 that would benefit from our treatment, please do not hesitate to reach us. We are in the process of rolling out youth services county by county, and we would be happy to work with you one-on-one -on -one to chat about your situation um, and that referral to see if we can help. We accept walk-ins, and we currently do not have any wait lists at any of our locations. Well, it looks like Sarah froze. Um, so we don't have wait lists at our program. We can always, um, I think that's where she was getting at. We can always, we do reach our capacity quite often. We will call the state and get an increase, but we can also do exceptions. We don't ever want to turn anybody away. Does anybody have any questions until Sarah gets back on about anything we talked about so far? Uh, I'll make a point here. Uh, one thing that's important is on um, our platform, um, we want to open up the age so that people can send you referrals of um, patients who are under 18. So um, we should all go in there today and just make sure that the individual sites are updated to accept all ages. Um, that'll be very helpful because we, we do see... I, I'm we do so have a lot of youth calling us and adolescents calling us. And for, uh, we are working, me and Dr. T have been working. Um, oh, Sarah's back. What the I am back. so sorry. I lost power for a second and an internet went out. My apologies. Of course, while we are presenting. So let me <laughs> just open up that slide. My apologies. We will get through this um, in just a few minutes and then we can get over to our Q&A, everybody. Um, so I am ducking in my bathroom right now because this is where the internet started to work. So <laughs> that's why I'm awkwardly positioned, everybody. Um, okay, let me get my screen shared. Um, we just went over the no no wait list at any of our... Um, perfect. That's where we and, and Sarah, I, just, I was saying as well, um, encourage everyone from your team today to go in and open up the age requirements because I think you guys have it 18 and up. And in case folks want to be able to make these referrals through the RecoverWell platform, um, those anyone 18 and under right now would be blocked. So if you guys can just unlock the sure. ages, that way we can get um, some referrals over to you for those for that teen population. Sure, sure. Thank you. Yeah, so um, Vicki, it sounds like you went through this slide. So I'll be moving on to the next one. We make our referral process pretty quick and seamless um, in three easy steps. We want you to reach out to us, whether it's you or the patient, and you can do so via phone. We have a 24-7 intake hotline, or you can do so from the website, recoverwell or our website, aegiscare.org. Step two is we book your appointment. And in that appointment, it's pretty quick. We do a brief screening and assessment to figure out if you're the right fit for our program. And if you are the right fit, we'll go ahead and move you to step three for admission. If not, we will refer you out. For admission, we do ask that you bring your identification card as well as your insurance information should you choose to use that. And then we'll go ahead and get you your first medication dose that same day and welcome you to our treatment team. Um, question for you. Um, uh, so, so you're addressing um, patients directly. So the patient advocates for the admissions process, um, when they're referring the patients through the platform, do you need them to send a copy of the patient's photo ID with the packet? So we reach out to the patients after it's referred to us through the RecoverWell platform. And so okay. in, that, um, re in that process, we'll be able to get that information. So it, it can go either way. Okay, all right, just wanted to make sure. Yeah, good question. 
And for grant assistance, we did mention that a couple times in this slide, we have 13 locations in California that is funded by the state opioid response grant. So this is great news for patients. What that means is that we're alleviating that financial hardship and that transportation hardship that patients might face as a barrier to even start treatment, stay in treatment, complete treatment. And so for the financial hardship, if you're underinsured, uninsured, and don't qualify for Medi-Cal or undocumented, you are welcome at any of these locations at zero cost to you. For the transportation hardship piece, um, we will go ahead and do taxi reimbursement, bus passes, and gas cards, depending on what the hardship looks like. We also try to coordinate with Medi-Cal transport for Medi-Cal patients. And if that doesn't work because of the area that they are in, some of them are in rural areas, some of them do have conflicting work schedules, then we can go ahead and review the transportation assistance through our grant as well. And here is our last slide. It's just our contact information as well as my phone number should you choose to reach me via phone. We are all open and welcome to questions after this meeting. would be happy to assist you. But we did want to keep the meeting short and sweet so that we could turn it back to you to see if there were any questions that we can answer for you um, during our time today. And thank you for attending our presentation again. All right, folks, let's open it up um, for questions. I'm sure there's lots of questions. Um, definitely, we have a lot of um, a Bridge and um, Rely Health folks that work through the platform. Um, and I know that the um, MAT is a very desirable um, option for their patients. So ask all the questions that you can think of. Um, there was a couple in the chat about age, and I think mostly that got covered. Um, does anybody have other questions about age, location, transportation? I think Dr. T should expand a little on the youth services that we offer. Um, someone had asked what the age range is. We do have one patient in California that is 16, um, who is, it, that's not for every county. Every county is not approved for that. Um, but please do call if you get youth services because there, we can always look into it more and see if we can offer that patient services. Um, but the 16 and older is for buprenorphine because it's FDA approved only for 16 and over. And then we're not, we have not offered methadone treatment to any of these services at this time. But Dr. T can talk more on that. Yeah, th that's what I meant when I said 16 and over, uh, buprenorphine is FDA approved for 16 and over. But uh, whenever we uh, take on treatment of a uh, patient under 18, the counties do the counseling. And we only have one patient currently that's on uh, buprenorphine. Great. Um, and let's talk about hours of operation. So um, the Recover Well platform is utilized 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So we get... Um, referrals in the middle of the night, early Sunday morning. So what is what does that look like for you guys on your side? Um, our clinic hours, most of our clinics open at 5 a.m. or 5.30 a.m. Um, the majority of them close at 1.30 p.m. We offer um, medication till 1 p.m., but we have several clinics that are open into the evening hours. And that's, um, you know, due to... Uh, how many patients we have, whether the building's big enough to fit. So we do have some that are open evening hours. Um, but for when we get referrals to recover well, I just want you guys to know that that, that we do get the emails. Um, well, most of the time we get the emails right away to let us know that we've got somebody who's reaching out to us on the Recover Well app. Um, I believe for my region, my area, I do receive the emails when our clinics EDs get the emails. So if, if they don't respond to you by 5 a.m. the next morning, if I get it in the evening, I'm um I'm on them right away. Hey, Recover Well sent you an email. Get on that app and look. So it is something um we are we can constantly look into. We all have corporate phones, we all get our emails, we all, you know, um, so even on the weekends. 24 hours a day. If you need us, reach out to us. We can get back to you right away. 
Yeah, this this over the weekend, actually, the holiday weekend last week, um, we had a patient that was in one of the emergency rooms that we actually were able to make the connection, like literally on a holiday weekend, and somebody got on the phone from Aegis um, and talked that patient through like next steps, when they could come in, what the medication um, dis you know, distribution would look like for that patient. And it really calmed them down because they knew, you know, even in this crisis, they knew what to expect. They walked them through the steps. And then ver the very first thing that next morning, the patient was in there for their appointment. And so far, what I'm hearing is that everything has been going really, really smooth. And, and it's nice too, because that patient who was in crisis at the hospital um, is now checking in with someone every single day. So that's another great benefit to an MAT program is that someone is this this person is going in every single day and checking in with someone to get their medication. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a very good point. Um, if I could just interrupt here really quickly. Um, yeah, when the patient comes in, they're seeing the uh, concierge. It's uh, outside, making sure everything's safe. They're seeing the medical assistants. Uh, if they have an appointment with the doctor or an MP or PA, they see them. And they're seeing the dispensing nurse. So if they don't even have an appointment with a, with a doctor that day, they're seeing about four people before they get up to the window. And um, we're all trained to determine if, uh, to sound the alarm if we feel that a patient is impaired or acting differently. So, so yeah, we have eyes on the patient every day, which is great. Um, another thing that um, our advocates should know is that on our side, on the recover well side, when a patient comes in and they're looking for MAT, we also, and I know that Aegis also does this because of the experience I had this weekend with this um, patient that came in on the holiday weekend. Um, so the Aegis team and then the recover well team, we're reaching out to the patient and saying, what other services do you need to support you staying in MAT? Do you need IOP? Do you need um, some outpatient therapy to go along with the MAT for the mental health? Are you looking for housing? Um, I think uh, Mauro, I spoke with this weekend from the Pasadena location, and he was like, don't worry about it. We will help this person find access to other resources. This is what we do. And so I thought that that was amazing because um, I don't know if Ann, um, yeah, Ann Yakub is on the call. Very frequently, she and I are dealing together with patients that are homeless and kind of using the emergency room as like a panic station where they go in and they're homeless and they don't know what to do. Um, when you're referring to the Aegis, they're be going beyond just dispensing medications. There's other social services that they're helping the patient reach out to. And I and I personally love that, so. No, definitely. And thank you for bringing that up. You know, the clinical services is a key component of this. And we know that we need to address, you know, the addictive behaviors and things of that nature, but it's also taking the holistic approach and trying to, remedy what other extenuating circumstances are going on with that individual and also connecting them with viable resources uh -huh. in the community so that we can address those needs, whether it's homelessness, are you hungry, is it transportation, um, are you trying to, have you ever built a resume, things of those natures, everything that we probably take for granted in our day-for-day -day life is some of the things that some of our patients are missing that are coming on. And so having that clinical approach and being able to address those needs and then also reconnecting them with the community and community members that we've gone out and to verify that these resources actually do service our patients, you know, just really helps to reconnect that individual with the community again, to feel like they're embraced, that they are loved and that they are valued and respected. So we do take that on very seriously. All right, so Hi. oh, I oh, somebody have a question? Yeah, I have a question. So I'm Jade, I'm from Sonora. I have an Aegis um, clinic right across the street from the hospital. Um, they are open from six to 11 a.m. And for patients here in Tuolumne County, they have to go to Modesto, which is an hour away to do the intake process or the initial visit. 
Now, are they able to call the phone number or do that online to do that? Or do they have to go to Modesto? Um, I know that the clinic here, because I talked to them yesterday, that they don't offer the transportation um, down there. So um, I was wondering okay. if there was... Yeah, unfortunately, they have to go to Modesto um, because of the licensing laws. But okay. the transportation, um, is there, can we offer that? Um, I no, like, I was going to go in and I have to go in. And yeah, we, we did. We did not. Is it possible? Oh, for that. So, and I was just, thinking more. Sorry, I think somebody's. Okay, I'm muting everybody. All right. Thank you for that, Amy. Um, Jay, just to all excited question, to talk to you, Sarah. <laughs> What'd you say? They're just all excited to talk. Oh, to you. yes. Um, you know, as Dr. T was saying, because of our licensing, Sonora is a medication unit. We opened that facility because we noticed that there were several beneficiaries in that area that were commuting that round trip daily. And so what we did right now is we opened up that medication unit to be able to provide them medication and, um, you know, services there. The, the downside to that is they will have to intake in Modesto, but their other services will be at Sonora. Nora. So that, that intake appointment um, is a hardship. We can offer transportation aid for it. And then once they intake there, they can receive the rest of their services local to them. Um, also working to earn take homes and things like that. Um, but unfortunately, that is the way it's built out. Now, if Sonora shows growth, for us to be able to open up to a full size clinic, if the need is there and we do that, then that will no longer be an issue. Licensing will be, you know, amended to make that an OTP and a full run clinic. So I okay, want to so add to that. I just want to let you guys know we can't provide their their transportation to get down to Modesto to admit, but if they have Medi-Cal insurance, they can call their health plan or Lyft or U Lyft, not Uber, Lyft mm -hmm. to get a ride and set up a ride for that one day and then a return ride. That one day of admission, Medi-Cal and um, health plans will provide that. It happens a lot here in our area. Um, as long as they let them know it's for a medical appointment, they can lift, they'll, Medi-Cal will pay for a Lyft ride or even a medical um, van transportation for them the one time. And Modesto uh, and Sonora are part also, of our grant. For any admin any follow-up oh. appointments that they would need in Modesto, Medi-Cal covers that. Um, Can I still do the re uh, referral process online for the patients up here that I would be referring? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And yeah, the management the that referral we process, oh, go ahead. Um, I'm sorry, sir. On the referral process with the app, when we go back and forth and speak with you guys and you tell us, oh, there's a transportation problem, our EDs can answer right back with, oh, well, call this number, you know, and see if they can. So um, that's what I loved about the Recover Well app is it's, a, it's a, we go back and forth with you guys and we work out the kinks together. Um, and, and that's worked really well for us. Absolutely. Yeah, Don't hesitate it. to ask those questions on that app because if we can help one off and like I mentioned those are grant funded sites we can potentially do more um, for financial hard or excuse me transportation hardship yeah I want to stress that and this is true for any um, transaction that's happening on the recover well platform use the chat portal um, you guys can get a lot accomplished by just um you know, having the conversation there, what you need, and then not only is the conversation there, but the thread of um, documents is also in there. So if they say they need a fa financial aid form filled out, they can upload it there. You can download it, print, copy, save from there, whatever you need. Um, but definitely use that chat portal to set all of those things up. So just to clarify, um, before we do this raffle and let everyone get um, back to their work, um, the process is, you know, use RecoverWell to find which Aegis facility is near you, which one is closest. Um, maybe sometimes, like in my case this last weekend, there were three or four facilities. I applied the patient to each one. 
I very quickly got responses from each one. Um, and that patient chose which one was closest and most convenient for them. And it worked out amazing. So, so you want to, you you can put the patient in, see which Aegis facility is closest and most convenient, apply to that or multiple of the Aegis facilities, exchange all that information in the chat. And then it sounds like, you know, if it's after that two o'clock period, someone will likely get back to you. It may be a, take a little bit longer because it's after their operating hours. Um, but the patient should have an appointment for the next morning as early as they can get into the um, actual facility. And in those cases where they can't provide transportation, or like in the case that Jade example gave, that Jade gave where they may have to go to um, see a doctor in a different county for their first visit, um, they, you may have to utilize the Medi-Cal resources for that first um, transportation appointment, but then thereafter, a lot of these facilities that they work with have the transportation vouchers that they will they will directly coordinate with the patient once the patient gets there. That's what it sounds like to me. Is that correct? That's correct. And Jade had a couple of questions um, as well. Dr. T, I know um, the take-home one might be one that you'd like to answer. The second one about being snowed in, we have clinics and areas um, where that is an issue seasonally. Um, so we do work with our team to submit a CSAT to be able to earn those patients' take-homes due to weather conditions. Um, and we, we work with them to coordinate you know, what we can do so they are not missing a daily dose of their medication. And Dr. T, there was a question about take homes. Um, I know you might want to answer that one more specifically, but you know, in general, uh, you know, depending on if they're on med methadone versus buprenorphine, there is a different time frame on how you would earn those take homes. But it can be very quick. Buprenorphine rather immediately with methadone, it's now within thirty days. Um, Dr. T, did you want to expand on that? Yeah. So um, the question was, um, how long does the patient need to be on good behavior? Um, well, if the patient has good behavior for a month, um, they'll get take-homes. Uh, but however, not just good behavior, um, they also need to not be uh, act it, an active substance abuse. That's a little bit tricky uh, because then SAMHSA goes on to say substances that have can have a negative uh, effect on opioids, so that can depress the respiratory drive. So essentially, they're saying if a patient as a urine toxicology is positive for methamphetamine, we have to really think hard if, if we're going to be restricting this patient and potentially compromising their job because of one urine toxicology positive for methamphetamine. So those are some of the roles. You need to be able to store them um, in a safe place. They need to uh, have no recent suspicion of diversion, um, no other behavioral problems, and dosing consistently. And after that, uh, they can get take-homes. And, and then how be... long is the take-home medication prescription for as a follow-up question? Um, how long? So how many days do they get? It says how long is the take-home medication prescription. So I think we can definitely answer that. We do provide them the take-home medication um, based off of how they earn it. Some patients have weekend take-home medication. Some have seven days worth of take-home medication, um, things of that sort. You continue on that same cycle of prescriptions that you take home unless something causes you, know, you to have them restricted. Right. Um, and so yeah. that could be diversion. That could be, you know, your your urine um, analysis showing up to be unfavorable and us needing to monitor you a little bit more closely, things like that. But you always have the opportunity to earn them back. We're just working with you on your daily accountability and monitoring to ensure that you're safely taking our medication and completing our program. Yeah. And, and what, what Sarah had said, just to reiterate, um, we'll start with maybe weekends. Um, then Tuesday, Thursday, weekends, if a patient has another, another favorable urine, if they're compliant, then they can go up to six, you know, up to 13, up to 28, if they've, if they've earned those. And then also if they're uh, providing unfavorable urines, um, it's up to the medical director and the team's discretion to restrict. But after, uh, depending on what is in the urine that they're unfavorable for, um, usually after two positive urines for an opioid like fentanyl will restrict one step level. Mm -hmm. 
I have a good point to make here that I, or I hope it's a good point. Um, when you're um, looking for your Aegis location, I think it's wise to ask the patient, um, is there a place that they need to go to daily, like a work location or childcare, daycare location that they're going to every single morning at a certain time or five days a week at a certain time and orient the GPS to that location? Um, the reason I would suggest that, and that would be on page four of the application where it says, you know, what's the preferred treatment location, home, crisis center or other, click on other and then ask them what's the address of where they work or what is the address of where they drop their kids off at, at school. That mm -hmm. way they're already in a routine. They're already doing that every day and that gives anchors them close to something that they're doing out of routine and necessity already. Um, that way it's not out of the way of their routine. Good point. Okay, um, so everybody on this call, we will connect everyone to the Aegis team. Aegis team will connect you to everyone so you can send, if it's okay, the presentation that you popped out for us today so we can review it on our own and share it with our colleagues. Um, and then how many how many um, people are we doing a, uh, the um, the I believe, I believe yeah. we said four, right? Okay. <laughs> I think we said right, four. And then I'm, I'm also going to do one. So um, the first four will be the ages and then we'll do the recover well one. So the first winner and I'll and I'll send you guys these names too so you don't Perfect. have to write them down. Yeah, names and emails uh, preferred. Okay, so our first winner is Vicky Lopez. I don't know if you can see my handwriting's horrible. I'm sorry. So Vicky Lopez, winner number one. I see Vicky on there. <laughs> yes. Um okay, second winner is Kisty. Are you on there? I think so. Um Kisty is the second winner. And third winner is Valerie Cruz. Valerie. Fourth winner. Oh, good. We got a good list today. This is going to be good. All right. So what are we winning? I missed it. We oh. are gifting Amazon gift cards. Oh, we're gifting. <laughs> That's yes. why you missed it, because it's not for you. <laughs> um, okay. Our... Um, our fourth winner is Anne Yakub. Woo! Awesome. Great job. And then let's All of you. Uh, the Recover Well winner. Put it on the other side so I don't forget. Is Mandy Herrera. Woo! I see Mandy. All right. So I will send you guys the list of names. And everybody, thank you so much for... Um, for, for coming in today. We stayed a little bit longer. I hope most, if not all of your questions got answered, but you have all the contact information for each of these folks. If you need to shoot them an email and ask more questions, please do. Um, this is such an important service. And I think uh, now that we have access to it through the Recover Well platform, it's going to be so efficient for us to find those locations. So thank you so much. And thank you, Aegis team. Again, thank you, everyone.